Hello, anyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, anyone that's in here. I just thought I'd come on tonight and uh, talk about garden harvest because right now I'm not getting a very good garden harvest. And I wanted to see what people's backup plans were for their garden harvest if they weren't getting a very good harvest. My children are arguing. Well, I'll give it a few minutes and see if anybody comes on. Maybe everybody's busy tonight, is in the middle of the week, and it is later in the evening. So I did not announce a live stream either. It's just a spontaneous one. So we'll see how everything goes. Well, maybe no live stream tonight. It's been a while since I've been on and I've been busy with my extra great, great nieces and nephews and doing family things, birthday parties and things like that. Trying to stay busy, looking for trying to harvest some berries and whatnot. Um, we've had a few service berries, but not really enough to do anything with. Been looking for some huckleberries. Haven't seen any of those this year. And uh, went fishing yesterday. Didn't get anything on there. Uh, fishing for brook trout. Um, haven't really... Uh, done much canning of anything of sorts yet just because I don't have any harvest I do have some basil coming up that's I could probably dry a few things of um, my sweet corn is no good my potatoes are doing great um, other than that <clears throat> I think I'm probably going to have to move my tomatoes either to the greenhouse or get a cover on them because we don't have much longer before it comes to fall. You know, pretty much about five weeks left. And we got maybe three weeks before we get a frost. So it'll be, you know, I've learned some this year from where my garden's located it's not getting enough sun like it needs so everything is uh not as it's not growing the best that i think it could so definitely have to scope out other locations and i know that i've been here after this year where i get sun because we are surrounded by pine trees living in the woods, you have limited space because of your shade for summertime. So, but yeah, just uh, looking, you know, trying to get something going. If I don't have a good harvest, 
Um, I will usually look for other people that have had a good harvest in the valley and then pick up some harvest from them. So it's still organic. Um, I had, that's what I did last year when I didn't get anything. Um, it's kind of a bummer since this is the second year in a row, but it is what it is. Sometimes you just got to let go of things and just do with what you can. Um, I probably will get some green beans this year. Um, not as great a, as I've had in the past, but um, some a thing is better than nothing, I think. So um, as far as things that I, you know, I wanted to put away, um, I was hoping to get, you know, I knew I wasn't going to get any, you know, apple saw or apples or peaches and pears because I just don't have those planted, don't have any berries planted. I was thinking I could forage some, but that just hasn't worked out either. Um, it's just not a great year. Um, everything that I've foraged is either um, not tasting very good because of the heat that we've had. And then uh, it's been really dry, so um, they're not that great. And then also, um, just the there's not really any huckleberries finding. Um, I am going to try to see if I can find some thimbleberries. I have thimbleberries over here, but they didn't produce this year. So um, I'll be watching my local... Um, uh, fruit stands for sales. We have one good one, and so I watch them for sales, and then I keep an eye on for um, people that have excess garden veggies, and um, I like to get from there. Or there are also some local um, howdy corn fed life. And there are also some local um, uh, orchards that grow extra veggies around where I used to live. And my husband actually works still over there, so he can pick me up some. So that's where I get my, my fruits, my apples. I usually clean and try to glean wherever I can. So um, anyways... Hope you are doing well, Corn Fed Life. How is your garden harvest? I got hummingbirds over here and them. They keep fighting over the horn hummingbird feeder. Well, see how I just I thought you were part of Shed Wars. Oh, how are your fruit trees doing? What did you plant? My neighbor planted, I think she said 13 trees this year. We didn't, I did not plant any fruit trees this year just because I wanted to see trees are a little bit more um, expense. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, where everything was. I'm good to go before I got any trees to plant. So <laughs> you're your own thing. <laughs> well, I think I am too, but it's definitely different up here in the woods. You know, the shorter growing seasons and the land that I have is picking and stuff. Definitely changing some things for next year, though. Trying to hope for better. Well, that's good. Yeah, I would like to plant those as well. Um, the kids, we had an apricot tree that where we used to live, and the kids just loved apricots. So I am looking forward to getting an apricot tree. Not a lot of people like apricots, but the kids grew up on that, so that's what they like. 
Um, we're in Idaho, in the Idaho Mountains in Zone 5B. So we have a really short growing, I mean, I wouldn't say short growing season, but um, where our house is located, um, compared to the places around us, we have a lot because there's a lot of trees and stuff where you sit back like in a corner. And so it's, <sighs> hi, Anthony. Anyways, so our section usually gets a little bit more shade. And also, um, it takes longer for the snow to melt when it does come. So um, it seems like we're just on top of our summer. And here we are almost into our fall and winter. Yeah, I live close to Oregon. I live close to the Oregon border. I've, in fact, I was born in Oregon. So I don't know what part of Oregon you're from. So how you doing, Aunt Nay? It's a, just a spontaneous live just because I have not been on YouTube at all, hardly, just once or twice. I've just been real busy with kids. So, yep, all right, right on the border. Oh, you're right over there on the coast, huh? Is your growing season different for where you live now? Um, I lived in Ontario, Ontario, Oregon. Yep, Batney was too. <laughs> yeah, we, I, for a time, I used to live in Medford. So Medford's not too far from Roseburg. So when I was a lot younger, I lived in Medford for a while. And I like going to the coast to see the ocean and, well, then uh, not too far away. Do you can your goods and stuff like that or harvest anything corn fed? Yeah, it's, I like the ocean. I like the ocean and the mountains. They're comforting. <laughs> oh. Oh, you don't care. Well, well, that's not a bad thing either, but. Yeah, you never know. It's, I don't know. It's everybody's to each their own. Sometimes it's easier just to go to the store and get it. So. We are about ready to. We'll be butchering our two pigs. Uh, probably not this. In two weekends, I think. Two, I know it's three weekends because I've got so many things going on these next few weekends. Can't do it. But boy, they're ready. They're probably, they're pushing probably 275 the one is. So I don't really like them having that big. The last pig we did, she was hitting close to 400 and she was no fun to hang up. Oh, chickens. Well, our chickens are starting to lay a little better. It was so hot. They just didn't do anything. We have quail, too, and we've been getting about five eggs a day from them. So, <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, we hung her for, um, on a, because um, we butcher our own pigs, and when we hung her up, she was so tall. She, we couldn't hang her all the way. So, anyways, we, um, she was over eight foot from top to bottom. She was huge and I will never do it again. <laughs> Just too big. <laughs> but quail eggs really don't taste that much different from chicken eggs. And I bake with them all the time and they have no difference to me. They are a little bit of a pain in 
in the butt, when you go to crack them, some of their eggshell gets in and because they're so small, so they're hard to come apart. So, you know, you got a chicken egg that's probably this big and a quail egg that's probably this big, but the shell is kind of tough and they have a, oh, that's neat, Aunt Nay, about the, was it just live? They had something there. You could watch them, but the kids like that. Our kids sure enjoyed it. They loved watching them hatch. Danny, how's your garden doing? I don't know if you guys see those hummingbirds flying. I keep hearing them and they have almost come right in my face. Oh, a 4 H exhibit. Yeah, that's pretty neat. They fight over these hummingbird feeders. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Our We had, you know, we usually just use hog panels for our fencing. Hog panels and T-posts. When toward the end, this 400-pound pig was getting out. And how my kids got her back because they would, you know, help me. They would just get on her and ride her, and she'd ride right back into her pen. That's just the funniest thing. If you go to my Facebook page, my Facebook group page, you'll see them riding her back in the pen. Now, I don't think they go all the way back, but craziest thing. Yeah. Did you did your green tomatoes ripen up, Antony? I had a pot belly pig as well, and he was a brat. I am not sure I'm going to get any tomatoes. Mine are just starting to flower, and I'm very discouraged that I won't get any. But like I said, if I have to, most thing that I would probably do is just canned salsa. My husband just goes through it like crazy, and so... I do some salsa and some uh, hot sauce for him. So that's genuinely what I use the tomatoes for. I, um, I would post it on Facebook, except for my husband and I have agreed that our children won't be on our, my YouTube channel. So, um, I guess just because it's more public, but I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, pretty pretty funny to watch. But my son, he rode sheep and he uh, rode his bull. And so, riding a pig was no, no big deal to him. <laughs> He's tried to ride the pigs that we have now, but they give him a run for his money. They're like, no, you're not. <laughs> so... He kind of stays out of there because they nibble on him a little bit, but he's a little bigger too now. So my it's funny because my daughter, she's seven and she tries to get in there too. I was like, you better stay out of there. <laughs> yeah. I just never know when it, we're going to run into and stuff. Finn. So the kids would love it. it. If it was their choice, they wouldn't have any problem with it. But, uh, I don't know. I've seen a lot of good channels with their kids on it. And, you know, my kids are pretty, pretty smart when it comes to things like that. But. Oh, cool. Did your pig do tricks? My pig would carry a ball around, put it in baskets and well, my, my pot belly pig anyways. It was just like a dog that go in and out of the house and until it got to be too big and then it had to go out. Yeah, pigs are super smart, uh, very intelligent. Um, they have conversations with me daily. As soon as I walk out that door, they're talking to me like, hey, 
yeah, come over here. <laughs> they like for me to scratch their back with, uh, I scratch the backs with sticks, you know, and rub their ears and stuff like that. And they love it. But yeah, I, uh, I had one pig and, um, I raised her up. I knew what she was for and, but I just got really attached to her and doing our jobs, you know, raising our own meat and stuff that can be difficult at times. <laughs> but I had to sell her. I couldn't butcher her because I got too attached to her. So my husband's like, you ain't getting any more to do that same thing. <laughs> so I had to really promise I was going to, you know, not get too attached to them. So, oh yeah, they love belly scratches too. A peanut butter and jelly, huh, Anthony? I cured bacon today. I cured, I want to say, probably, I would say probably eight pounds of bacon today from our last pig. So I'm trying to clear out the freezer, get done what we need to get done before we get these other two done. So, um, cause we moved last year, I've only been curing it as needed. So we got these two, I got some more pork bellies that I need to cure up. And I think one more ham I need to cure. So I got some uh, painted mountain corn that is, I think, probably going to do super good for me. I'm hoping anyways. It's uh, a multicolored corn, and I have not ever tried it. So we'll see how that is, how it's going to go. Oh, thank you. I'm sure she appreciates that. She's almost to her, her thousand mark, so... She's really trying to get there so she can get her monetization. So she's got a good channel as well. <laughs> yeah, you love corn. <laughs> yeah, um, it is doing, I planted my, my sweet corn. The end of May last of end of May this year, and it might be this high. My painted mountain corn is probably a good three foot, and it's mature at four foot. So, um, I think I'm going to. I don't. You probably can't see it over there. It's. Let's see. You can kind of see it right there, but not very good. Yeah. Hello, Ark Wild Man. Yeah, there, it's pretty slim for me, too. I, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed, but there's not much I can do. You have a few channels, Corn Fed? Do you do anything different to prepare for winter corn-fed life? We are also, we have to get wood. And we where we used to live, we used to get six cords of wood. Uh, here, we have to get 10 to 12 cords of wood. So it's kind of putting a strain on it because we, we know we our time is limited. <laughs> Oh, a channel for the dog. <laughs> Ark Wild Man, what is, um, I know you planted a lot. Um, I do have some cabbage, but 
I'll be surprised if I get anything from it. So I thought you planted some potatoes and uh, I can't remember all the things you planted in yours. Well, that's good corn fed life. We have a propane generator that runs our house. Um, we have a 500 gallon tank, propane tank. Hello. So we have that propane tank that's underground because we do live in the woods and we are apt for um, forest fires. So that's helpful. Um, yeah, we have, uh, I have a wood cook stove and then we do have a wood stove in our living room and we do have wall heaters, but don't like to run those, but our propane generator will run our whole house. So all we do is have to flick a switch. Did you get any cabbage or onions, Ark Warman? I don't. Uh, the Cowgirl Homestead, I don't know how to pronounce your first name. But she has amazing gardens, and she's gotten a lot from her gardens. She's like on her second harvest. That's good, Ark Mile Man. I see some people are off and on about their harvest on their garden. Some people, I guess it just depends on where you're located in the United States or in the world, really, because it was just a funny year for our weather this year. So broke is how you pronounce it. Okay. Yeah, she's got an amazing gardens. She's busy lady. I really liked her. Uh, she had a container garden she made out of britches. Our, um, if you're talking about our uh, generator corn fed life, um, we use it more in the wintertime when our power fails because um, we can go hours without power. So generally, I don't like to switch it on like right when it goes off. You know, we're pretty handy at it if it's light out or whatever. So we just keep it switched off until we absolutely have to have it on. So. Oh, they're still growing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I had some Swiss chard growing in my, but it was finally, I had time to harvest it. I planted that back in January, so um, I have quite a few tomatoes that I started, but um, I have that greenhouse, and so what I'm thinking, I put up some trellises, and I was going to, if we did get chances of frost, because we still have nights where it's in the 40s, and so... Uh, I was thinking that I could cover my tomatoes and try to protect them that way, but they won't stay warm for very long. So I do have that big greenhouse. I don't have anything in right now, and that was what I was going to do. And these tomatoes are way more mature than the ones I just planted. So hopefully I get something. Um, I was, If I don't get any harvest from the peppers that I planted, I know I can um, take those up and put them in my mudroom and they'll probably just fine. The tomatoes are a little bit bigger to be growing in my mudroom, but I can sure try. Is anybody going to overwinter any of their harvest uh, this year if they don't get it? Or do they do that anytime? time? 
Mark Wallman, have you found any berries to harvest this year at all? I've been keeping an eye out, but I haven't been able to watch all your videos, so. How did your pepper plants come out being overwintered? Did you plant them again this year or did you just start over again? Yeah, you live in a warmer, warmer growing climate. Uh, in my, I will probably just try to see if I can overwinter, you know, my peppers and stuff in my mudroom. It stays cooler back in there. It stays probably about 50. But I definitely am. Uh, one of the problems I had this year is I didn't get enough light in there. Um, just because of where the sun comes in. So I'll probably have to get some grow lights back there. I do have some in on the ceiling, but it's not enough. Blackberries and muscadines. Oh, that sounds good. My mother-in-law has some, um, some grapes and... I'm just waiting for those because she gives them to me every year. So I'll make some uh, grape jam out of them. So I did my strawberries I planted this year did um, come ripe, but they were really bitty like this. So I hope next year they're better. And also my... Um, I planted 50 crowns of asparagus this year, and they've all grown, but I didn't harvest any just because, you know, it's the first year. So they were two-year-old crowns, so I'm hoping next year they will be well-established enough that we can get some asparagus from them. Thanks for stopping by, Corn Fed Life. Oh, man, you're going to be busy with those grapes, aren't you? Yeah, with my mother-in-law's grapes, I probably get about the same. I probably get about 45 pounds of those. Um, my father-in-law, Pat, um, he planted them probably eight or nine years ago. So the harvest on them are really good, so... We, I was trying to find some of those thimble berries and uh, so we have some over here and we have service berries, but they just haven't been, uh, the, the thimble berries haven't produced. I didn't even see them flower this year. So we got a few more berries and then yesterday the kids and I were taking a ride on the four-wheeler when we went to go fishing and I found a wild apple tree. So... Hello, Tracy from Tehan. Oh, wine. Very nice. Um, that'll be tasty. Um, I can't drink that much. <laughs> I don't do wine or meat or that much. I just am a lightweight when it comes to that now it'd be nice for cooking maybe but for taste but um but yeah i uh i don't do much wine because it just knocks me right out <laughs> how's your garden going tracy Has anybody got anything real exciting about what they're excited the most? If they grew something they didn't grow last year, that maybe is producing more this year. Or maybe you got something that's produced this year that didn't produce last year. So you can have an extra on it. Oh, that might be not be bad. Mixed half and half. Not horrible, but not great. 
Yeah. I'm still waiting to see how everything's coming out on my end. So we are, I guess uh, it's just slow going. There's nothing I can do but just wait and see and be patient. So. Tracy, did you do any foraging for berries or anything like that? Since this is my first year, so, you know, I, I see as the seasons change that there, there's different things that come available that I didn't notice before. I mean, we've come up here all the time and I didn't notice because I wasn't here all the time, but the different, you know, plant varieties and things like that. Um, I probably will notice more as it gets cooler, things might come on that I didn't notice before. So... I'm always looking and learning about what's around me that may be edible. Wow. That's great about your tomatoes. Well, I'm glad you were able to get some, some quarts of uh, blackberries. My neighbor has raspberries, so I was going to get a few from her, and I had raspberries at my other place. I was tempted to bring with me, but I didn't, just because we I already brought so many. I have plants still. They're trees, but they are not edible trees. They're not fruit trees or anything like that, but they're to go in. Um, I had them at my other house in Memorial Garden. And uh, I just have to find the right spots for them. I am weird about it because I I feel like there's a certain spot for things and I have to find that right spot for those things. So They have to be planted before winter though because I brought them over from my mother-in-law's where I had planted them before we moved. So... Tracy, do you can? You can and harvest. Broke cowgirl, did you can any of your tomatoes or did you just freeze them? I thought you did can, Tracy. Yeah. I have been, you know, the other thing I've been doing, there's a little, uh, like I call country store, but it's about six miles from us. It's a just one of those, um, one of those real small country stores, and they get a little produce every now and then. And so, um, the last time I was in, they had some free bananas, and they were kind of bad bananas. So I collected them up because they were offering, me and I made some banana bread out of them. Well, this last time I went in, they had free milk. So I was able to make, get the milk and make some cottage cheese out of it. So that's how I'm being frugal on that. We can't just, you know, if we're out, I don't just run to the store. You know, these little country stores don't carry too much stuff. So I try to be really, really good about my meal planning so that I have enough, you know, and keep enough in the pantry that, keeps me going for a few weeks in case I run out of something while my husband's in town. So thirty quarts of tomatoes, that's pretty good. It takes a lot to do those thirty quarts of tomatoes because they reduce down. <laughs> Tracy <laughs> Are you going to do any more cooking on your wood stove this year?
Quart jars. Well, I got some uh, last year. Jeez, might have to send you some, huh, Anthony? <laughs> but I've been collecting because I knew it was going to be a rough year for jars. So I started early in getting lids and whatnot. I mean, I have cases of the lids. So, oh. I said I was talking about your tomatoes and how it takes a lot to get those 30 quarts of tomatoes. <laughs> I can deliver and visit. <laughs> that might take me a few days. <laughs> Jeez, and gas prices these days might take me a, uh, a lot of money too. <laughs> but I'd love to see you. I'm kind of getting excited this year, too, because it's getting closer to uh, hunting season. And my boy's got his hunting license this year, and so it's, it's going to be his first year to go hunting. So he's quite excited about that. He's a very good spotter. He can spot while we're driving down the road. He'll spot wildlife off the side of the road while we're driving. and. Um, We'll spot deer and elk when him and his dad's out hunting and stuff. He's got a really good keen eye for for hunting. So he's really excited about that. So hopefully we can get, get something for when we go hunting too. So hasn't happened in a while. But not every year is the same. So we'll hope that we can find something. And we're here up in the woods. That doesn't mean anything because hunting season comes and it seems like the woods are crawling with people. I have not canned fish. I have not been able to get a lot of fish to can. Um, if, um, right, we have two vehicles, but the one vehicle is not very good still. Um, my husband works in the valley and his mother has been sick. And so we have not found a lot of time to do these projects we need to get done. So I usually go as far as my four wheeler will carry me and uh, carry me. And my son has a four wheeler. So um, we have not been able to get a lot of fish. We do see, we have tried to go um, fishing for brook trout, but got skunked. So I love fish though. And it seems like it would be a smart idea to can fish. So salmon is one of those things that I wanted to really get after this year, but didn't. We have salmon that run uh, off a few rivers, just not too far from us. I would say probably about 50 miles from us. So I mean, some people are more fortunate to have it closer, but we don't haven't canned fish yet. Um, probably I will can some more um, pork this year. I did find it very convenient to have that canned pork, you know, um, already cooked. If we get in late or something like that, have that canned pork ready. I like salmon patties, too, and so does my family. Yeah, I'm not sure other types of fish either. Um, I remember when we I lived in Michigan, and I had an uncle that used to smoke fish. Maybe Aunt Nay can tell me what kind of fish it was, because I'm not absolutely sure on it, but it was really good. Yes venison and we have elk here too so um we'll get elk tags and deer tags and uh i don't have you ever canned rabbit before because i haven't heard of anybody that has but rabbits are on our agenda today my son actually butchered our first quail we have 
some quail that are ready to be butchered. So he thought he'd take, jump in there and see how it goes. So we did have one butchered, but, you know, quail are not very big, but they will give one person a meal. It takes them a long time. So I think majority of our quail are going to be used just for eggs. Um, not to say that we won't eat them or butcher them, but they're another meat on the plate. So um, I, I enjoy the quail. They're nice. They're fun to watch and stuff like that. Um, but when I get down to it, when I raise any animal, I have to know that, um, they're not just pets. You know, there's a reason why we're keeping them because they are not cheap to keep. So if it comes out that, you know, why my, what was nice about the quail is why my chickens were taking a break from laying eggs. My quail were out producing so I always had eggs even when my chickens were taking a break. So I guess that's a benefit to having the quail. Well, that sounds good. We love rabbit. So um, we have had rabbit in the past. Um, but when we moved, before we moved, um, we um, that was one of the animals we limited on what we were going to move. And so we didn't, uh, we didn't bring the rabbits with us. But I enjoy rabbits much better than a meat bird. I'm not a chicken eater. So I enjoy rabbit better. And I also do not like when I open the cage and the meat birds are flying at me. <laughs> I open a rabbit cage. They're not so mean and hostile, you know. So... I th I like the taste of rabbit better for so for me it's not going to be no more beet birds if my kids want to take a gamble at it maybe but since I did the meat birds this year I won't be doing them again <laughs> I find that rabbits are easier just because um, you can forage better for a rabbit better than you can a chicken um, because there's more more available you know than what it is for chickens. So chickens are, I don't know, these chickens were kind of picky about what they were eating. Like, so, but, um, so meat birds, I won't do again next year. Rabbits, I will be. Yes. Um, we are about, I am assuming that we will be having a lamb pretty soon as well. So, Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, that, that could be an issue too. And I think where, you know, where we're opposite because we, we do have a hotter temperature, but we have very cold winters and thick snows. So as we're going into this year, there's so many projects I still have to get done. And the ram we had, I had a nice little shelter built and stuff like that. Well, I guess he showed me that I didn't have enough stabilization in it because he knocked the whole thing down. So my idea is to get some kind of small barn built where I can put in the hay for them, but they can come in there too. And he was, our ram was not being very nice to our ewe either because she was already bred and he was just trying to come right back at her. And I was like, nope, can't be having that. So, but, um, the breed that we have in our, our sheep are supposed to taste close to beef. So, um, we will be finding out after this year, after this first lamb is born and raised up, if that's what we want to keep our sheep for. So we've had the sheep. Oh, I think this ewe is, she's going on four years old. And this is the first time that she's going to be bred or has been bred. So we'll see how that happens, how it works out. And our neighbors, um, if she does happen to have 
more than one want to buy a lamb as well. Yeah, um, I don't remember if you, um, do you milk your goats, broke cowgirl? Or I, I know you have Norwegians, but I don't remember if you milk them or not. Uh, we had a goat, and he was a Norwegian goat, and he was a brat. He was funny. He had a good personality. All them goats do. But we keep him in. He always jumped. We'd put big old branches sticking out everywhere. Could climb out. Do you make cheese or anything with your milk? This ram that I have is, he's pretty naughty. He does, he does the same things. He, he jumps out. He, all the other day he got, oh, I thought he was going to get run over. Part of the problem is my, um, my whole property is not fenced yet. And so if I'd had a second fence, he pro it probably wouldn't have been no problem, but it is not yet. Yeah, my, I think when it comes to the males, they all are, I cannot, um, we, uh, um, I, the only male that I haven't had on our place is our horse that had a problem with anyways, is our horse. And uh, unfortunately, we had to put him down because he just got too old and he had an accident with my son. And he rolled his shoulder or something. And, and they, uh, homemade mozzarella cheese is so easy. You too, Tracy. I hope you have a great day tomorrow. I'll be having to get these guys in bed here shortly too. So don't want to hold anybody up. Yes, I agree. We have a nice rooster, knock on wood, but we've had to put a few down too. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. We'll see what, what rolls around, but I definitely got to get on things for winter. It was not, what we have was not supposed to be a permanent situation for our winters because uh, we get so much snow, it's hard for them to move around. So a barn would be great. Yes, and if uh, um, even if you have an older gallon of milk, you know, it's getting close to expiration. If you take um, a little bit of lemon juice and you put it in and you cook your milk, I think it's to about 190 because I just made some the other day. and um, you put in your lemon juice after you get it to temperature and then you let it set and curdle, then you can strain it when it cools down to room temperature and put it, I put mine in like either a flour sack, cheesecloth, something like that. And um, you um, let it sit for quite a bit to get that way out. And then, um, then you got your cheese. I, just made some not too long ago because I was out of cottage cheese and um, it makes really good cheese. So that's what I do with my old milk. So but very easy to do. Yeah. Uh, I even have the ram up for sale right now, but there's no bites. Uh, nothing's moving just because hay is so expensive. How much is hay where you are, broke cowgirl? Right now we are paying um, twenty dollars a bale. So, uh, I and over the summer, over the winter, the highest it got was twenty eight dollars a bale. I know where Aunt Nay is at. Yes, ouch. <laughs> and we we feed our sheep the hay, and then. Right now, because our sheep are very wasteful about, 
They just want that alfalfa bit. So what I do is we take the old hay that the sheep don't finish and I'll finish it out with my pigs and my pigs just love it. So that's a, a helpful anyways. Alfalfa has got a, quite a bit of protein in it. So it all gets used up somewhere. And then we also put in some with the chickens too. They like to, to rummage through it. So you don't let it get as hot as 190 then. Yeah, um, I've done it with liquid rennet before as well. Um, I can't say, you know, I've done it with vinegar and I've done it with lemon juice. But I can't say that I prefer a me different method over another method. So I think it's all the same in process to me anyways. Other people might have different opinion, but. Uh, this time of night, I don't know if you guys can see, but all the flies are coming out right now. If it's not the flies, it's the mosquitoes. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty spendy, too. So. Yeah. Were you able to get any hay out of your... Out of your hay fields are, I know a lot of people are struggling with this drought that's been going on, so. <laughs> that's okay. <clears throat> are, are, will your goats eat the grass hay? Because mine are very piggy and they won't eat it. We even tried to stick the, uh, alfalfa stems, you know, because we thought, oh, maybe if it was smaller, they could chew it up better and they would like it. Nope. They won't even do it. Picky, picky, picky. They'll eat grass, fresh grass. Yeah, but not hay grass, not bale grass. Well, I probably should start shutting down here. I got to get these guys into bed. And uh, it was nice talking to everybody and hope everybody has a good evening. I'll have to get back on your... Oh, you're lucky. I Ours are just brats, I think. <laughs> I just spoiled on that alfalfa. Do you have a lot of waste from your goats? Because uh, my, my sheep are bad. They eat the bits of the alfalfa and leave the stems. And it's not even that bad of hay. It's, it's really good looking hay, but they're just really spoiled on it. If they don't got anything fresh right then and there. They're out there hollering, give me some more, give me some more. <laughs> I tell the kids, go turn the hay. Because they put it in a in a container, you know, so that it doesn't get everywhere. Yeah, that's what I do. I tell them to turn the hay because, you know, there's a lot of good bits on the bottom of it. And they won't, they'll pull at it a little bit, but they won't turn it or nothing like that. So that's what I have the kids do because they're, the sheep are their animals technically. So they go out and feed them. So I tell them, well, turn the hay, see if they'll eat some more of it before we throw it out to the pigs. So anything. Oh, that sounds good, Aunt Nay.
Yeah, I got to get going too. Got to get these kids ready for bed. So it was nice talking to everybody. I hope everybody has a good night. Thanks for stopping by. See you later, broke cowgirl. And I'm not sure if there's anybody else in here, but I will hope to catch you later. Thanks. Bye. Night.